It's been such a long time since I've worked on any updates to my Reflow Master in terms of functionality and I'm so excited to finally announce that I have added a feature to my Reflow Master code base that folks have been wanting for a really long time, something that I've also wanted for a really long time. And in the process of adding this feature, I also optimized the code, simplified a lot of it, and made it easier to read and easier for people to expand upon if they want to. Let's have a look at what this new feature is, shall we? For those that are familiar with the Reflow Master software, you'll have noticed that the interface has switched around a little bit. We've now got a new menu item where settings used to be called Bake. That's right, I've added the ability for you to do a timed set temperature bake inside your oven. And what is bake useful for? Well, you can dry filament with it. You can dry out your RGB LEDs. Seems to be quite a common problem that people have where they've bought RGB LEDs like addressable WS2812Bs and they've been sitting around for a really long time and then they go to use them and there's moisture inside the LED and they pop when they reflow. Another cool thing you can use baking for, something that I do all the time, is to dry off my PCBs once they've been in the ultrasonic cleaner. So how does bake work? Well, it's really simple. You click on bake, and as you can see, you've got a temperature, and you've got a time. And you can use the third and fourth button for plus temp plus time to set the values. The temperature can go all the way between 45 and 100 degrees. There's no point going lower than 45. Most toaster ovens can't really do anything accurately at the low level and ambient temperatures generally around 25 to 29 anyway. Time can go all the way up to two hours. When you adjust the time, it goes in increments of five. Starting at 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna do a 10 minute run right now at 45 degrees. I can click start. And as you can see, it's baking. And it's going to try to ramp the temperature up to 45 degrees. Tells you how many minutes you have left. Now, because of thermal mass inside toaster ovens, they increase in temperature and then hold the temperature quite well and don't decrease temperature very fast. So the code will try to match 45 degrees. It may overshoot a little bit. If it overshoots too much and you're running a fan on the back of your oven, which I've got, which I'll show you in a moment, it'll actually kick the fan in to try to not overshoot too far. Otherwise, you shouldn't get anything more than maybe three or four degrees above your target as it initially overshoots. Once it settles into its rhythm, you'll find that it'll vary anywhere between one to two degrees from your target temperature. I'll just fast forward this and let it run. And just like that, the baking is done, fan is kicked in, start dropping the temperature. You can also at this stage open the door to help the fan. And let's have a look at what's inside the oven. Yep, you betcha. We've got some filament. Yay! So here's a look at the back of the oven. I've got a 40 millimeter 12 volt fan that's running off one of my fan controllers, which is connected to the back of the Reflow Master and the Reflow Master can control when this turns on or off. It can also PWM it if I want to turn the fan on slowly or turn it on full blast. I've just 3D printed a little adapter because I originally had a five volt 50 millimeter fan on the back here and I wanted an adapter anyway to be able to attach the fan controller to and I just happen to have a 40 millimeter 12 volt fan. My fan controller can power a fan up to 24 volts and as low as 5 volts and all of that's just going through some cable management into the back of the Reflow Master. 
Yes, I'm wearing a hat because I'm in desperate need of a haircut. So, as I said, I'm really excited about this update. A couple more things. The settings that you set in the bake screen for the time and temperature, they get saved in your settings file. So the next time you go into the bake screen, when you restart the Reflow Master, it'll actually remember your last settings, which is cool. I also added thermocouple sensing that it'll actually show you an error if there's a problem with your thermocouple or if it's not connected and prevent you from going into a reflow state. Now, some people might have already seen that if they've bought a reflow master off me in the last two or three months, but the version on GitHub doesn't have that functionality in it. So as of today, I'm calling this software version version two, and it's gonna be on GitHub for you to download. It's gonna be next to the 1.07 version. I'm not going to stomp that version in case someone's done a fork of it and have done some modifications. So anyone that has an existing Reflow Master will be able to download version two and flash their Reflow Masters. Anyone that's using my code base in their own DIY projects, you're also welcome to grab the update and update your systems. And from today onwards, all of the Reflow Masters I sell will be shipping with this version two code. I'm really excited because it adds stack of versatility to an already good product, as far as I'm concerned. You know, just reflowing was great, but being able to bake your components or dry out filament or even dry off your boards after ultrasonic cleaning is a fantastic addition. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I will hopefully see many of you on my stream next week. Bye.